feels great. Uh, I miss it, you know, it's home. It's taken me a long time to be, get where I'm at in my life to where it's time to be able to come back. So when I come back, um, I'm able to now finally be able to tell my story to the people that raised me really, the, the area, the community. It feels really good from when I left here to now coming back home, I feel the love more now than I ever have. Well, Sonics, of course. Uh, I don't know if we're talking about eating, but that's that's on my head every time I come to Oklahoma, you know, uh, is, is hitting up the Sonics and getting me that Route 44 Ocean Water Limeade. Yeah. Be ready to sacrifice, and that means in all aspects of life, pretty much, because it takes pretty much anything that you're wanting to do. It's going to take work. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take the time to perfect whatever you're trying to do. And if that's entertainment, then, you know, there's some people that it just kind of effortlessly comes to them. And then there's some people that have to practice really hard. Whether you're either or, it's still going to take you some time to make sure that you uh, never give up because there's going to be a lot of doors that shut in your face. There's going to be a lot of no's that are told to you when you ask if this, this, and that. Again, it's taken me years to build up what I have now. And Creek Fest was the first time I was asked to come here after 2011. I first started to become in the rap situation where people were actually paying attention to who I, what I was doing. We just kind of did the little opening thing during the day. Wasn't very many people and nobody really knew who I was, you know, but it was, it just felt good to come back. And now I'm coming back again to be able to tell my story, to be able to talk about the culture and how it actually saved me from falling even more into uh, bad choices. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's, a, it's gonna be a journey. So just know within the journey is the, that's what it's about, right? The experience within working hard to get somewhere. Because once you get there and you, if you're in the entertainment industry, whether you're doing music or acting, when you're there, you're there and then it's over. So then it's like, what are you going to continue to do? And you got to continue to work towards what you want. Don't ever give up because it is possible. You know, our people are finally getting those opportunities to represent ourselves in those capacities. And it may not happen right away, but I think that um, we just keep pushing, man. And it's going to continue to give more opportunities to more indigenous people, our community and across indigenous country and native country period, you know what I mean? I don't know if they don't know. I love the show, but I'm not punkin', right? That's just the character. And that's really the point of a lot of my story is like, I'm pretty much the opposite of that guy, you know? And if you watch the show, you know that type of guy. I'm a family man. I have a wife, I have three daughters and two sons, and you know, I wouldn't know what else to do without them. You know, I bring my family, my kids, pretty much wherever I go, you know, um, whether if it's, if it is something that I'm just kind of flying out for, I, uh, I usually bring one of my kids at least. If we're driving somewhere, most of the time it's my whole family. So, you know, I just try to stay based in that. Right, right. My musical inspirations. You know, I know it's kind of, I have a few and it's hard to just pinpoint them, but you know, my mom was a big inspiration. She wasn't really an entertainer or singer, but she always was open to allowing me to listen to what I wanted. It's never, don't you listen to that stuff or what is that you're listening to? Turn it off or, you know, because I believe maybe like, she might have grew up in that. She never really did that to me. That was a good one. And within that, I found artists like Tupac and Biggie, of course, and, you know, uh, Lightfoot, 
you know, I got to shout out Lightfoot, um, Gary Davis. I mean, he came here to the Creek Fest and did his thing. You know, whenever I was young and seen that, I assume that's how people feel when they see me on like doing the show and stuff, because it's like, I can do that. Like, I think I can do that as as a kid that grew up and really didn't, and we all kind of did, I guess. I just talk in the first person, but it's like, we didn't really have representation coming up, you know, um, in those capacities as far as media, movies, uh, sports, as an indigenous kid, you know, we're not being able to flip through the channels and find those heroes that we were looking for, you know? And now, like I said, I was able to see Lightfoot and find relatable things that I found in Tupac's music, that I found in Biggie's music, that were telling a story. Those are very big things for me because trying to find that representation when you're a kid is very hard as a native kid, you know? And that's when I'm glad things are starting to change and we're starting to see those things happening. So it's a, it's a blessing, you know? Maybe Friday. I could watch that over and over. I think I watched it over and over when I was growing up, man. Like it was just the VHS that sat in the v you know, VCR. If you kids know what those two things are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just you gotta keep it's just easy to watch over and over. Oh, it's a recent one. Um, I was down at the youth and elder camp at uh, the Philip Deer Grounds a year ago, maybe, yeah, a year ago. And just to sit and listen to some of those stories about, you know, the movements and people that, you know, Philip Deer's son, Bonnie Deer, you know, telling me stories about things and, and having my family there and my daughters there and, and really connecting to those things that I never got to experience whenever I was a kid. And yeah, it's crazy. It was only like 30 minutes north of Okmulgee that I grew up, but it's like the disconnection that I had where, you know, I didn't understand anything. I had to go and sit and listen. I think listening was my best memory, you know, and, and just listening to those stories and soaking it up, man. That's really all I was there to do and learn and show my daughters that, you know, where they come from, what our people do, what, who our people are about, and how community means everything to us, you know? Oh, well, if you're, if you're Muskogee, then that's pretty simple. I'm just calling myself Indian, eh? You know, um, for everybody else, it's a good conversation starter. For our own community, they're just like, eh, what? You call yourself the Johnny? What's going on? <laughs> but it's, it's uh, for other people outside of our community, especially non-natives, when I explain it, I'm able to educate them in that little small conversation on who I am, where I come from, and who my people are. And then some people say it wrong, you know. Um, Creek people know, but it's this like uh, st st Stinjody, and I'm like, ah. but that helps the conversation start because they don't know how to say the name. So it's like, uh, it's 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 that's kind of where it all come from. Um, I was once known as a different rapper. I went by Serious. Whenever I was starting to get back into my culture and start to really like educate myself again, I was a disconnected individual person that didn't understand where he really came from or language or ways or nothing. So when I started to really find that out, it was like it was a no brainer to use the name in a way that I could connect myself to that. And then that way people would know that I'm 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 a rapper, but I'm native, but I'm also I'm Muskogee. And so that's a that was like a, a definitive name from everybody else in the world, you know. You might be able to Google some people's names and there's 20 different type of rappers with the same name. But with this one, it was like, I'm the only one. I'm the only one, so it helped me set me apart from everybody else. 
Me? Um, I don't know. I think I'm just, I think I just live that life every single day. Um, I treat my kids goofy and I love them to death. Uh, but I catch myself just, you can't, you can't get away from the way you are and, you know, am every single day. And I can't be not who I'm not, you know? So I think, uh, just the daily life is resi. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Um, how many tattoos do I have? I lost count, seriously, I, I don't know. Um, some of them are on top of others that were old and on top of on top of. And so it's just like, it's, it's not necessarily more about what I have on me, I guess, more than what I was doing when I got the story of what was happening in my life when I got the tattoo is more of the story than what the tattoo really is. Um, and being a tattoo artist, that's not always the case. Some people have something on them that is like blatantly, like this is why I have the tattoo. And my favorite tattoos would probably have to be the names of my kids and my wife. Um, have my wife on my face, have my daughter on my forehead, have my other two kids on my neck. And so like, those mean a lot to me more than the others. So, but it's all a story. So they all have their own little, little story inside of them. So I'm just going for one big tattoo. Just that no matter what, follow your dreams. There's gonna be times where people don't understand your dreams. There's gonna be times where people disagree with what you're doing. There's gonna be times where you doubt yourself and you have fear of rejection or any of those things. That, that, that stomach butterfly feeling before you're about to do something um, is supposed to be there because then it knows, you know, it's, it's the universe letting you know you're doing something that somebody else is afraid to do. When you have those feelings, face them and follow through. We all might not like to get up and talk in front of people, or we all might not like to bungee jump or, or do any of those, you know, but it's kind of like every summer you go to the swimming pool and there's a high dive there. And then you get up there and you're like, oh man, I don't know if I want to do this, but then everybody's behind you. So either you're going to go, or, you know, or we're going to push you, you know. So it's just kind of like you got to get over those things and just jump and, and um, experience either the fail or the triumph, whatever it may be. Um, you're meant to happen. It's meant to happen no matter what. So whether it's a failure or whether you succeed in that, just keep going and believing in yourself. You know, because that's all we got sometimes to keep us going is ourselves. And if you have other things and you have a stability and you have all those backings for you, that's wonderful. But some of us don't. Some of us come up with really nobody encouraging us to do these things. So when you find yourself doing something that everybody else don't want to do or they're telling you that you can't even do, don't believe them. And follow that gut that tells you to face that fear. So... That's what I would say. And Mado.